What is up next door? What is up next door? This is Abraham Walker, your neighbor, and the Walker family went on another adventure. I want to tell you about, hopefully to encourage you to go out and explore the area. So when we go on vacations, we usually spend, you know, a decent amount of money somewhere else. And last year when we were on vacation, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I don't do enough locally where I live and I wanted to change that. So this year, 2024, we've been focused on doing more stuff here in the D.C. metro area. So this week we went to our first hockey game. Yes, our first hockey game. Now, we're from New Orleans. We've been here for 10 years, and we really had no interest of going to a hockey game because hockey isn't a big sport in New Orleans. The nearest hockey team is in Dallas, Texas from New Orleans, and that's about a 500-mile drive or distance, and it takes about eight hours to get there. So, you know, it, it's it's not something that's really on the top of mind for people who live in New Orleans, right? So people who live in New Orleans don't think about hockey, but there's a hockey team here. I know we won a championship or a title recently, so I've been wondering about things to do in this area that are specific to this area that if we ever did move, we have no plans of moving. We don't want to regret not doing so we wanted to go to our first hockey game. Now, there's a dad in my dad's group who loves going to Caps games or the Washington Capitals. I believe they call them the Caps. And I asked him recently if we were to go to our first game, what would he suggest? Well, one of the things that he suggested that we do is that we sit in the 400 section. So that's at the very top of the Capital One Arena. The reason why he said that is because since we don't know anything about hockey, Hockey is a very fast moving sport. And if you sit too close to the ice or too close to the rink, you may not understand what's going on. You can't see everything at the same time. This is great advice because we we sat in the 400 section and by golly, it was there was a lot coming at us. Right. I mean, there were so many like um, transitions in the in the puck moves so fast that we're really glad that we sat in the 400 section. So that's what we did. The next thing we did was or I guess the next thing on this list is we purchased our ticket from the Ticketmaster or from Ticketmaster and we paid fifty three dollars per ticket. And with fees, it was a grand total of two hundred and sixty three dollars. Now, another thing we do when we are on vacation is we use public transportation. I like public transportation because I don't like driving. So that's what we do on the weekend when we go on these little events, if we can, if we can. So we caught the metro from the Kingstown area. We caught the blue line. We left our house at 1130 and we got to the arena about 20 minutes or so before game time and the game kicked off or skated off or started at 1 p.m okay one of the cool things about traveling via metro on the weekend is that you don't have to pay for for parking at the metro station and the metro cost four dollars one way so we had an eight dollar round trip for a family of four which comes out to be what 32 dollars or something like that so it was that bad we caught the blue line we transferred to the yellow line at braddock road because the yellow line actually has a stop at the capital one arena i think it's called the uh, gallery place stop that as soon as you come up from that stop you're right at the arena so it was no walking time whatsoever super convenient now i had a gimbal with me which was a mistake my wife tried to talk me out of bringing it and I didn't listen. I didn't listen. And so when we got to the arena, one of the attendees or one of the workers who works outside said he saw me using my gimbal, my camera. He said, hey, look, we're not gonna let you in into the uh, property with that device. So we had to find another alternative. Now I have been to a couple events at the Capitol and Arena and I thought I saw some lockers at the stadium and lo and behold, we found Ben Box which is between the 104 and 105 section in case you want to use the locker system. It cost me $16 to use the smallest size locker. You have to download an app. So if you're if you're gonna do this, if you know you're gonna use the bin box system, download the app before you get there. It took me a little while to get it downloaded, set up your account. I think you have to put your credit card information in at that time too, but it's only $16 or it was $16 
to use Binbox. And so then we were able to go inside of the arena. We have clear, we use clear when we are traveling or are flying. And also there's a clear checkpoint to get into the arena. I don't fully understand why clear is at the arena, but it's available and we didn't have to worry about standing in line. Not that the line was moving slow, but we already have this program, so we we use it. If you have clear, the check-in station for clear is across from Hagen dazs ice cream in Gallery Place. So you have to find Gallery Place around the Capital One Arena and then just look for Hagen dazs and you're gonna see the clear checkpoint right there. It's always right there too. So I've used it a couple of times for events there. This was a kids' day event, right? So I guess for some of the matinees are the games that are like in an early afternoon time they usually try to cater them to kids because families with kids make it easier to bring your kids to these events and so the first 5,000 kids got or received a penny bank a coin bank and we got there early enough that my boys were able to secure two of those joints and so then we went to our seats our seats were amazing there was great performances between the different periods. One thing I learned today is that a uh, hockey does not have quarters because there's only three of them. So I guess they call them thirders. I don't know what they call them, but there were only three periods. And in between each period was, well, in between period one and two and two and three, there were, uh, it's a 20 minute interval, right? So instead of like a halftime show or a halftime, they have these intervals, which is pretty cool. And this is when most people go to the concession stands to get something to drink, something to eat, and also to use the bathroom if you need to, to relieve yourself. So that was that as far as the game goes. Now, would we go again? No, I don't think so. I don't think so because this whole event was about $300 for our entire family and I just feel like there's more that we could do with $300 in the area that we haven't done already. But if anybody wants to gift our family tickets, we'll gladly take them off your hands. This event was like a first and a last for us because living here, living in the DC metro area, like I said, we're from New Orleans. New Orleans doesn't have a hockey team. So it makes sense for us to go and explore and find out why this area is special, why we pay these exorbitant prices, what do we have access to, and the hockey team is one of those things. Now, next up on our list, well, not on, on our, not the next thing, because I don't know what we're going to do next weekend, but we, we're going to try to do something. But we did look at the DC United soccer games that are coming up. So I know we're going to go to one of those games. Messi is going to be in town next week, but those ticket prices are insane. They're like 300 to $400 per person. And I don't even know anything about soccer, so I'm not about to spend, you know, thirteen fourteen fourteen hundred dollars on soccer tickets but the games where a star isn't playing only cost about thirty dollars to forty dollars per ticket so we'll definitely add that to our list we're also looking forward to going to the city open tennis tournament in the summertime that was a great event we went to last year and i knew that everyone in our family enjoyed it last year so we'll definitely do that again this year a couple new things we're going to do well another thing that we did last year that we're going to do this year is go to the george mason tennis match their college team local college team that has tennis tournaments or tennis matches and you could just go sit out and watch the tennis match you don't have to pay anything they have a little stand area that uh was pretty cool you even get to talk to the players if you would like to so that was pretty cool that's coming up in this spring and then we have like two to four football games that we want to go to coming up well in the fall so we either going to go to the ravens or commanders game we haven't been to either. Oh, no, I think we've been to a Commander's game. We, we've never been to a Ravens game. My wife and I went to a Commander's game when we first moved up here, but we haven't gone to the Ravens game. We're also going to go see the University of Maryland play. They're supposed to have a good football team. So, yeah, so one of our neighbors actually goes to a lot of the University of Maryland, Maryland games. So we'll, we'll do that. And we're going to finally make it to a Howard University football game. They have a great band performance i don't think the football team is all that good but the band performance is pretty cool so that's some other things we're going to add to our rotation if you are watching still thank you for watching what adventures do you think the walker family should go on next if you have any suggestions post them down below in the comment section and i will see you in the next video peace